Have you ever longed to do your part in a world with so many shadows, walking towards light? Lent is an Old English word meaning lengthen, and this is the time of year in the Northern Hemisphere which the days are getting longer, and so quite literally we are walking towards light and doing our part in that journey. But in the journey of faith also, we are walking towards the cross. And as we walk to the cross, we are filled with hope at the promise of what lies beyond the light of resurrection. Welcome to this first Sunday of Lent. And as we do continue our journey towards the cross, I pray that God's love and grace will light your path. Thank you for being with us and let us worship. Good morning, my name is Rhonda Greco. This morning's gospel reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up from the water, immediately he saw the heavens opened and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, thou art my beloved, with thee I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately, immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. 
he was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. It's wonderful to see change come, particularly when it's constructive and transformative. The Greek word metanoia means meta, change, noia, mind, changed mind, or if it describes the word, our English word, repentance, we know that it's about a changed heart and a changed life, and what a wonder a changed life and a changed heart is. I watched a movie this past week. And we're going to organize a movie night for the church, for I would love for you to see it as well. But the movie takes place somewhere on the East Coast in an aging United Methodist congregation. And the people of this congregation decide that they're going to recover an ancient practice of painting a fresco in the sanctuary. But this fresco is going to be a fresco with a difference. And in the painting and the execution, in the preparation and the actual revealing of this fresco, metanoia or transformation or a changed heart and changed lives become self-evident. You see, the difference with, with this fresco is that this fresco wasn't, wasn't going to have as its subject matter people who were famous, they weren't going to be kings or queens, presidents or speakers of the house, uh, prime ministers. They weren't going to be famous actors and actresses from Hollywood. But the people, the subject of this particular fresco painted in the sanctuary of this aging United Methodist congregation were going to be the people off the street who attended the soup kitchen or who worked in the soup kitchen serving others. And so the artist did his preparation and he made his preliminary sketches sitting down with the various subjects and as he sketched them, so we watching the movie heard the story of these many broken lives, their struggles, their sense of being forgotten. Eventually there came time for the fresco to be un unveiled and there was this wonderful celebration as it was unveiled. Later on, there was a, 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 an art gallery, an art show of the various sketches. And each of these people who had sat to have their portraits painted or the sketches made of their, of their faces, each of them were invited into this beautiful, beautiful building. And as the camera zoomed in close to many of these faces, we saw many a teary eye as suddenly they began to experience that they were somebody. In our gospel today, found in Mark, we hear Jesus say, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is come near, repent and believe in the good news. John the Baptist has just baptized Jesus, and we have heard the voice of the Father say, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. But then nobody likes a prophet, and, nobody, and, and Herod didn't like John the Baptist, and so imprisoned him and eventually killed him. But Jesus, in the long shadows of his own day, gets up, goes to Galilee, and says the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near, repent, and believe in the good news. And so as we enter this season of Lent right here at Covenant United Methodist Church in Spokane, Washington, or wherever we might be, we pray a prayer for ourselves and for all people. This is the candle of repentance. Some of us are doing a Lenten study, uh, utilizing scripture as well as the poetry of Mary Oliver, and it's not too late for you to join if you would like to do so. But at each, at each such, 
at each devotion, written one per week all the way through Easter, there's a prayer that is prayed. And we pray that prayer as we light this candle of metanoia, this candle of changed, this candle of a changed heart and a changed life. Let us pray. God of mercy, help me change my life. Let me love today with a wild and imaginative love on earth as it is in heaven. I hope this season of Lent is going to be a meaningful one for you, as I pray it will be for me. And as we consider this particular text, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is near, repent, change your heart, change your life and believe the good news is here. We also consider this text through the words of Mary Oliver in her poem entitled The Wild, Wild Geese. This is what she has to say, and it brings a different perspective on the season of Lent. Normally, we associate Lent as a time of deprivation, a time where we have to sacrifice something. This is what she writes in her poem. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. wherever you are in your life at this particular time. Perhaps the perspective that Mary Oliver brings is for you as it is for me. We do not, we only have to let as we want the fullness of God, God's love and grace, we only have to let the soft animal of our bodies love what it loves. There's a vulnerability about this, 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 this line in the poem, the soft animal of our bodies. Vulnerability not only in the sense that we're flesh and bones which can be broken and one day will die, but the soft animal of our bodies also communicates a sense of vulnerability in not wanting to risk ourselves to love too much, to put ourselves out there as somebody who is somebody, who is a part of the family of God, who belongs to the, the fresco which God paints in the world. Mary Oliver suggests that we don't have to be good, we don't have to walk on our knees a hundred miles, all we have to do is to let that soft animal of our body love what it loves. And as we risk to love what we love, so the God of love is going to work God's miracle within us. But she also suggests that we do despair when we do not love what we love and do fail to risk ourselves. And she writes, tell me about your despair. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine you see the sense of community emerging. Tell me about despair yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. We do despair in life as we face our sense of inadequacies, as we try to cope with life's, life's burdens and struggles, and perhaps during this time of the pandemic, we experience the, sh the shadows of the world in a particularly acute way. But she says, tell me about despair, yours and I will tell you mine. And so she raises the, not only the reality that the world goes on, regardless of whether we despair or not, but that we're able to triumph over that despair as we enable in community to share our despair with, other, with others and in community to walk the journey together. 
So you don't have to be good. You don't have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. All you have to do vulnerably is to love what you love is what she just, she's suggesting. And she's not minimizing despair. She encourages us to own it in spite of the world continuing to go on regardless of whether we despair or not. But that we cope with that despair by looking it in the eye as we walk with a friend who also knows despair. But then the poem continues. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. In that church, a fresco shared the miracle of each of those peoples whose persons whose faces and whose bodies were painted on that wall that fresco announced their places in the family of things they were somebody and as they experienced who they were somebody in the family of things so the tears flowed and I like to think so they experienced not only a changed heart, but changed lives as well. Jesus says to us on this first Sunday of Lent, the time is fulfilled. In other words, the time is now. The kingdom of God is come near. Change your heart, change your life, and simply believe in the good news that love is real and it begins with you and me loving what we love and allowing God to love us into being somebody in the family of things. Join us in the study if you, if you don't already have one that you're doing. We'd love you to participate uh, and do watch for the movie in which metanoia can be seen happening amongst broken people. Amen. Let us pray that prayer of repentance, that prayer of metanoia, the prayer of changed heart together again. Let us pray. God of mercy, help me change my life. Let me love today with a wild and imaginative love on earth as it is in heaven. Gracious God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for never giving up on us. As we journey towards the cross this Lent, we invite you to walk with us. And we ask that your spirit might touch us deeply that this season might be a time not only of self-reflection, but may it be an encounter all over again with what it means to be a changed life. We thank you for each other as members of the Christ community. We pray for one another asking that you would always help us to be the light that you were, Lord Jesus, we pray also for those of our number who are sick or ailing, be with them, lay your healing hand upon them. We pray for those who have lost loved ones who, and who at that time experience the grief of their loss. May you be their strength and their comfort. We pray not only for ourselves, but we pray for our nation as we pray for all nations. And may we experience once again the promise that one day we will be one, people loved by you, regardless of color, regardless of language, regardless of creed. We thank you, O gracious God, that you not only call us to be in relationship with you, but that you send us out to discover our meaning and purpose, not only in loving and serving you, but in serving others and serving your creation. And so send us out again and may we rediscover what it is 
that we are called to be and to do. Hear our prayer in Christ's name we pray, amen. This does bring us to the end of our worship service and still our sanctuary is empty as you can see, but we hope soon to have some kind of news for us to begin to, mo to meet once again in person. I remind you that once again that we are in the season of Lent and if any of you do not have a Lenten devotional program, uh, we have started on Ash Wednesday this past week, uh, but it's not too late to join. We will email you the resource and invite you on a daily basis, just simply with the aid of Mary Oliver's poems to re-encounter the God of light. Um, so do just contact me or Kim and we'll get that, that information to you. And once again, be looking for a, a congregational movie night. We're hoping to organize that sometime soon where we see people in being painted into a fresco, discovering that they are part of God's family. This ends our worship service and our, we are reminded once again that we are now not just free to go, we are rather, we are sent. We are sent in Christ's name to live, love, and serve in all that we do. Therefore, go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.